Now, where were we? In the last episode, we recounted how LSD entered society. Albert Hoffman synthesized it in 1939, and once he did, he shelved it because it did not provide the efficacy for pain that he was looking for. Four years later, call it intuition or an educated guess or serendipity, he felt that he needed to research the shelved compound LSD-25. At this time, he accidentally ingested it. The Technicolor bicycle trip, revered by many, was the starting point. LSD became the tiger. Depending on who you asked at the time, it was the most regal animal, one that would tame the mind, provide self-introspection, and mystical experiences. Or, if you asked the other camp, it was a tiger waiting to pounce on its prey only to devour it piece by piece. So LSD was a hero and a villain at the same time. The perfect god, Janus. Let's take the regal view of this tiger first. Hoffman came back from his trip with a renewed love for and connection with the beauty around him. And he wasn't alone. Sandoz had no clue what was happening and how this compound should be employed. It was the days of the wild, wild west. Molecules went from discovery to clinical studies in just two years. But in LSD's case, it went from the vial straight to the mouth. Sandoz shipped these drugs to anyone with even a whisper of an idea wanting to test it in a clinical setting. It quickly entered widespread psychiatric use even before it was known what LSD would be used for. Osman and some of his contemporaries used it in an attempt to treat alcoholism. But at the same time, the same way that mescaline was willingly provided to Huxley, they freely distributed LSD for clinical experimental use. We can argue about whether Osman and his colleagues were right or wrong, or acted responsibly or irresponsibly. We could ask if a drug, just because it provided an experience different from the existing psychiatric practices of the time, should be given out like candy. But I think we'll steer clear of passing judgment. Just like a good gardener, our job is to seed these questions in your head. Now let's go to the Johnny Appleseed of LSD, Al Hubbard. Hubbard entered the fray and used his charismatic muscle to introduce LSD into California. So the stage was set for an enthralling drama, one where opinions, ideologies, and personalities, an ego or lack thereof, depending on who you ask, would clash and set off a ticking time bomb. What were those happenings? What is the common thread that ties the Nazi chief scientist, Kurt Blome, a janitor in a psychiatric office who became the best-selling writer and social celebrity, the psychedelic rock band, Mary Pranksters, a Harvard professor, and the CIA? The simple answer? It's a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Just like what Osman said, to fathom hell or soar angelic, take a pinch of psychedelic. A pinch of psychedelic was enough to make the world go round in circles, like a snake biting its own tail. Should we dig in? This is Psychedelics, a Scraps original podcast exploring the therapeutic potential of psychedelics. An enthralling story of an improbable drug class, banished into exile, yet comes back soaring like a phoenix from the ashes to save mankind's affliction with mental health disorders. (laughs) 